Hello again. Welcome to Old News, the programme and podcast which looks at news stories of the day through the papers of yesterday. Farming and particularly potatoes have been back in the news recently with the news that a farmer on the island was going to stop growing potatoes after many years, quoting various difficulties of the island and of the marketplace and growing conditions and such like. We've heard a lot about the difficulties for farmers in recent times. And I thought I'd rummage back to see, on the potato front, what had been fielded in years of yore. And more than you might think, with some interesting takes on just potatoes or potato farming on the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man Examiner, Saturday, July the 23rd, 1904. Novel potato production. The article was headed, Few people are aware that an entirely new system of growing young potatoes during the autumn and winter months has been recently discovered. This novel method of potato culture is likely to become exceedingly popular, we're told, as it's so simple the merest amateur can scarcely fail to be successful in his first trial. Like a good many things, it was found out quite accidentally, Mr G. Stanton, steward of Park Place, Henley being the fortunate discoverer. He came across it this way. The establishment of which he has charge, being a large one, a considerable quantity of potatoes are stored each year. When the tubers are lifted, they're carted to some chalk caverns, of which there are several on the estate, and they're placed on the floor in heaps. The caverns are, of course, perfectly dark. Now the crop thus garnered a year or so ago was a particularly large one, far more potatoes being stored away than could be possibly used. On previous similar occasions, any surplus had been given away when the following season's crop was lifted. Accordingly, in July of the succeeding year, preparations were made for the removal of all the old potatoes remaining. It was then discovered many of the old tubers were simply covered with tiny new potatoes, very small certainly, but real potatoes nevertheless. The most promising of these tubers were selected and placed one deep on the floor of another part of the cavern, a little finely sifted dry soil being lightly sprinkled over them. About a month afterwards, it was found that the budding potatoes had increased very much in size and were in fact big enough to gather for the table. They were found to be very much superior in quality to young potatoes grown in the ordinary manner, being almost entirely free from waxiness. And that taken from The Garden. If we look at the examiner of Saturday, February the 3rd, 1917, First World War time, of course, the food supply. Braddon Farmer discusses potato production. Mr W. F. Cowell's straight talk, we're told. A meeting of farmers of the parish of Braddon, called by Mr G. Drinkwater, CP, to discuss the governor's proposals for increasing next year's potato crop, was held at Douglas on Saturday afternoon. There was a good attendance. Mr Drinkwater, at the outset, said that in order to win the war, three things were necessary. First, an adequate supply of men. Secondly, an adequate supply of munitions. Thirdly, an adequate supply of food for the country. They could not possibly win unless they had an adequate supply of men. They might not win if they had a bad supply of munitions. And although the food in question was imminent at the present time, it was not quite so important as the other two because it did not follow that there would be not enough food in the country or that the submarine menace would not be got under. But the government at the present time considered the food question a very important one and they were very anxious that the supply of potatoes should be increased. Mr Drinkwater then explained to the meeting the governor's suggestions for producing more potatoes in the island by utilising enemy alien labour. Mr Cowell pointed out that farmers were asked to produce men and potatoes. If the farmers had the assurance that the few men on the farms of the island would be left with them, the farmers would do their utmost to make use of the government scheme to produce all the food the land would produce. But if they were left to rely on alien labour, and if the few skilled men on the farms were to be taken, then he had no hesitation in saying the scheme was unworkable. In the Isle of Man Examiner of Saturday, April the 20th, 1918, So heading a little bit later on in the Great War, Defence of the Realm, the Bread, Brackets, Use of Potatoes Order, 1918. His Excellency, the Lieutenant Governor, has issued an order under the Defence of the Realm regulations dated the 13th of April 1918, requiring the use of potatoes or potato products in the manufacture of bread to such an extent as he may order. 
potato bread. Any person acting in contravention of the order is guilty of summary offence against the defence of the realm regulations and is liable to be sentenced to imprisonment with or without hard labour for a term not exceeding six months or to a fine not exceeding a hundred pounds, a lot of money in 1918, or to both such imprisonment and fine by order B.E. Sergeant Government Secretary, Government Office Isle of Man, dated the 13th of April 1918, taking the potatoes to use bread, of course. You can get potato flour, of course, but have you thought of potatoes and the automotive industry? Probably not. I refer you to the Mona's Herald, Tuesday, April the 19th, 1938, the Ford News. Potatoes in car production. The Ford Motor Company Limited at Dagenham purchased large quantities of potatoes, but not for consumption by the workers. It is impractical to boil white metal or babbit, but the bubbling effect is necessary to bring any impurities to the surface. This bubbling process is produced by pushing a potato on the end of a rod into the hot metal. Immediately, all the scum and foreign substances rise to the top. This reaction to the potato is the result of the high percentage of water in the vegetable, which causes minor explosions in the molten metal. Who would have thought of the use of potatoes in car production? The Alamann Examiner, Friday, March the 13th, 1942, so uh, in the middle of the Second War now. Grew food, daren't sell it, we're told. Potato poser for committee, councillors criticise marketing association. After cultivating a potato crop to assist food production, the Douglas Transport Committee have been refused permission by the Potato Marketing Association to dispose of their stock of some 40 tonnes. This remarkable situation was revealed in minutes of the committee which came before the Town Council on Wednesday, and there was vigorous criticism of the association after the following correspondence had been reported. Mr C.F. Wolseley wrote that his committee were being seriously disturbed because of the smallness of the quota they were receiving for potatoes and pointing out they had a stock of some 40 tonnes available for sale. Mr Wolsey pointed out they had not the same storage facilities available as an ordinary farmer and in cultivating the crop to assist food production they were of the opinion they could easily have disposed of the entire tonnage on satisfactory terms and so avoided a big wastage of foodstuffs. Storage, he wrote, automatically brings long tails, we know what they are, and other undesirable features in its train. Miss E. Dick, acting secretary to the Potato Marketing Association, replied the committee could not issue any additional quotas to the department and added it will be appreciated that farmers also have their storage difficulties and it is hardly fair to allow one registered producer to dispose of his entire stock whilst others have to abide by their quota. Alderman Skillicorn, vice-chairman of the committee who presided over the meeting at which the question arose, said the committee felt very strongly on the matter that while they'd done their best to help the authorities to produce more food, they were left with a considerable quantity which it seemed doubtful would ever be sold. One would have thought by this time of the year the Marketing Association would have had a consensus taken of the quantities of potatoes available in the island and what the consumption would be by the end of June so that the balance could be exported. He described the association's reply to the letter as unbusinesslike and unsatisfactory. It goes on for quite some time detailing the issues. In the defence, Sir Alderman W.C. Crane said he held no brief for the Marketing Association, but the facts should be brought out and a lot had been said that was untrue. The quota system was there rightly or wrongly. Each month every producer of potatoes got to know the amount that he could sell in order that everyone should get a fair deal. It had been found certain dealers were selling main crop potatoes before the earlies were used, with the result that the earlies went bad. The result was that the quota system was adopted and everyone got his fair share according to the needs of the population. Quite a problem at the time. And finally, 1958, the examiner of February the 6th, which was a Thursday. Taters is the short heading of the article. The island once lived on its potatoes as the partner in a traditional local dish. Now the opportunity is being offered to Manx farmers to expand their potato production for a valuable new export market. A British firm wants to buy for pre-packaging 50 to 60 tonnes every week of Manx ware potatoes delivered between next November and the following May, making up 1,800 tonnes in all. This means that the value of the exports would be up to £27,000 
and with the seed available for which the Board of Agriculture can also find a market, the total value of this potato scheme could reach over £35,000. The scheme will not strip the island of its potato supplies. The idea is that potato acreage should be increased to meet the requirements of this new market. Thus, a condition of the contract is that producers agree to plant specifically for the scheme over and above the acreage of main crop they grew in 1957. They've been given a guarantee that if they increase their acreage in this way, the produce of the extra acres will be earmarked exclusively for the export pre-packaging. Supplies for the island itself are therefore not in danger. Not the case anymore, it seems, with a local farmer now going to stop potato production. But potatoes, foodstuffs, agriculture, certainly never far from the Manx news. It is, of course, all old news. Until next Sunday, I'll say cheerio. You're gonna be yesterday's news.